Well, good morning. Everybody's good today? Amen. Amen. You couldn't wait, could I you? I couldn't wait. I said, Pastor, <laughs> I don't like standing up here for 60 seconds. <laughs> no. I like standing up here because I get to look at all y'all, make sure y'all come to there church. You go. And, you, well, you just scan And notice crowd. who's not here today, so I mean, I like taking that time. So if I'm looking at you, that's a good thing. Amen. 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 Well, I do, I do want to share something that, that God put on my heart as we were singing that last song, Awakening. There's a scripture that says, Awake to Righteousness. And then it goes on and it says, for some do not know the knowledge of God, and I speak this to your shame. And, um, of course, being a righteousness scripture, I've looked at it many times. But as we were singing it this morning, I thought about the words of the song. They were talking about rise it up and shining in this generation. And I thought, you know, that's really what that scripture is indicating, that there are people who do not have a knowledge of God. And unless you let your light shine, they're going to remain in the dark, right? And so he speaks that to our shame if you're not letting your light shine. So turn to your neighbor and say, we're going to wake up and shine bright. Amen. Amen. Well, let me just give you a few quick announcements this morning. First of all, in your bulletin, just want to draw your attention to the fact that we have a service tonight at 6 o'clock. That is not normal. Uh, we often have our uh, women's ministry meetings on, on the second Sunday night of the month, but we are hosting the community Thanksgiving service for the Minister Alliance tonight. So we will be having service here at 6 o'clock. It is a family service, so bring your children. They'll all be welcome here in this place. We are hoping to have a full house with all the different churches that are going to be here. Family Harvest Church is going to be doing the worship. And I don't know about you, but I think we ought to do the worship like we did this morning. Yeah. Sometimes you want to, you know, maybe play songs you think everybody knows, but I think it'll be a blessing to sing songs of our faith and of what we know. There you go. I said it publicly, so... I told her, she told me that the other day, and I said, well, you know what, I want to put a big glass jar right here, and then people can come put the request in it, yeah. and put like $100 bills and stuff in it. How, how many think we ought to sing The Great I Am tonight? Woo! How many of you think we ought to sing His Love Never Fails tonight? No, it's going to cost. It's going to cost. No, I'm kidding. Hey, hey, I got <laughs> access to your checkbook. I will pay. <laughs> well, so much for that idea. No, Listen, you know what? It's great to be people of faith. Amen. And Amen. we're not the only church and we're not the only That's people right. of faith. And so That's it'll right. be a great joy to celebrate with everyone in our community tonight. So we hope that you'll come. We're also going to have um, lemonade and cookies and coffee in the foyer after service. And so it'll be a time of fellowship after the service itself will probably only be around an hour. Uh, but please come and bring your children. It'll be great. So six o'clock tonight in this sanctuary. Um, also, just wanted to make mention the softball tournament that the Mighty Man Pastor may want to say more, but I want to just yeah, well, mention. Yeah, well, let's, let's do this. Do you have that video ready? Can we watch that video? Uncle Sa has something to say for us today. Thus, you have the snow cone stand. It's like a winter tavern for rednecks. Now, this is what we needed. I need a bigger straw. You need a one-inch PVC pipe. Boy, just that is giving me a brain sneeze. A what? A brain sneeze? <laughs> <laughs> It'll give you a brain sneeze. That's where, hey, your brain needs to sneeze, but hey, it can't sneeze because it's the brain. So it just hurts. I think it's called a brain freeze, not a brain sneeze. No, whatever it is, hey, I don't want no part of it. That's the best idea we've had in weeks. Yeah. You know, what that has to do with softball, I haven't figured out yet. But it's funny. <laughs> I mean, Pat, brain Steven. sneeze. You gotta, you gotta love that, man. I mean, come on, it just hurts. <laughs> The tournament so is going to be next Sunday night at 6 o'clock at Lytle Field. And so we want to encourage everybody to come out. Of course, the men that are going to be playing, they'll have a little tournament. The women's ministry is also going to have a concession stand. And I would just ask if any of the ladies would like to donate something, like maybe you want to donate some cookies or, you know, things like that, that we can uh, uh, sell at the concession stand. Let me know by Wednesday because I'm going to have a, a ministry meeting that night, and we'll uh, make note of that. All of the... Uh, income from the concession stand for that night will benefit our scholarship fund for our women's conference in February. So I always like to make sure we can help every lady go. So that'll be a blessing. So six o'clock next Sunday night. 
uh, mark your calendar. It's going to be a good time. Also, I just wanted to make mention to you that the Christmas brunch is right around the corner. And one thing that I failed to put on those big old cards that we passed out to you is that the uh, school-age girls are only $10 a ticket, and that's because they don't qualify for the free uh, dish giveaway. I don't know if you know that, but we give away a set of Christmas dishes. Somebody's going home with them. And uh, so that's a lot of fun. And so, uh, but the children, uh, they are welcome to come. It's a fun event for them as well. But their tickets are only $10. Adults are $20. So you can go ahead and start signing up at the bookstore and pay there. Or you can go online. We do have an a online uh, a registration there as well. And just, um, you know, HMS has been going for how many this is our time. third. Yep. This is our third class this year. So our fourth class is upcoming, and a lot of people. One of the things that I think that you're hungry for is just more knowledge of faith. Amen. Just to grow. How many agree? I just I'm here because I want to grow in my faith. Well, Pastor Joey is going to be teaching here at the Seminole campus the essentials of faith. And you know, you can only go as high as your foundation. My dad is an architect, and I learned that a long time ago that a skyscraper that goes real high has a foundation that goes just as low. So if you want to grow in your faith, you've got to get your foundation and your essentials right. And so we just want to encourage you uh, to sign up to take that class. It's $50. Um, you can sign up today, so we'll make sure we get your book here in time, but you don't have to pay today. So if you're interested in that class, please go and uh, let them know. And then lastly, we had a wonderful, wonderful water baptism last week. 16 people. Woo! It was awesome. I will be delighted when we can do it right there. Yeah, That'll will. be awesome. We will. And, uh, but anyway, if you were water baptized last week, we do have a baptism certificate for you signed by Pastor Todd and Brother David. And if you'll see Tia at the info booth, she'll give that to you after service. Amen. Well, we want to welcome you to Family Harvest Church. Thank you for being here today. I'm not letting her get off the stage. She's going to stay up here with me. So if this is your first time here at Family Harvest Church, just raise your hand real high. We want to welcome you here. Is there anybody here? This is the first time. Thank you for being here. Hey, what's up, dude? Good to see you, man. And uh, we're glad that uh, you guys came to church today. Um, as you can tell, our church is filling up. And um, I'm really excited about what God's doing. Thank you so much for being here today. You're not here by accident. God knew you are going to be here today. And God's got some special things planned for us today. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We'll give Miss Steffi a hand. She goes and she does her pretty thing. And hallelujah. Um, also, I want to welcome those who are watching on the website. Thank you so much for being here today. I know we've had an average of 7 to 10 that watch us every week, and uh, we're so excited. In fact, I wanted to give the church a testimony. We heard this last Sunday that there was one of our, our the people that were in our church was at work, and um, they were actually watching the service at work, and um, they had some downtime or something, and then they grabbed some employees that she was working with, said, oh, come on, watch, watch my church online. So they watched online. At the end of the service, if you remember, we, we did an altar call. Well, there was two people that got saved yesterday over the Internet from our service. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? God gets the glory for that. Amen. So not only are we having church here, but there's people that are watching us online right now, and we want to just say thank you so much for being here today. Hallelujah. And it won't be long. We're going to be on TV. And I'm reaching, just reaching more of our communities around us. So um, let me know this is the last days, and it's time to get busy. Amen. It's time to get, get the work going and get some people saved. So thank you guys for watching today online. Well, you're ready to give today. I said, are you ready to give today? We'll get those offering envelopes out there to you. Raise your hand real high. And uh, just wanted to um, give you some information today just to kind of let you know where we're at. As you can tell, our building is not finished. I don't know if you guys can, you know, figure that part out. We're, we're getting closer. In fact, we're really far along this time. Um, we, we've only got a couple more things to do. Um, but what, as you well know, we are, um, we're full already with the chairs that we have. So our next project that we're going to do is we're going to raise money for chairs. Can you say amen? We're going to raise money for chairs. And um, so this is my encouragement to you. The chairs that you're sitting on now are the same style of chair that we're going to get, just a different color to match our color scheme. These purple chairs right here in the center, they're going to Australia. Hallelujah. We are giving these chairs away to the Caminetti's there who um, are the deans of Rama Australia. We will be taking a trip soon um, to Tulsa. Then they have this big, huge, you know, those big metal cart things that they put on boats. I forgot what they're called. I just went blank. But those, yes, those things. And they're big. <laughs> and we're going to put our chairs in there because they're, they're, uh, they're, um, their ministry is based out of Tulsa um, when they live there in uh, Australia. So these chairs, we're giving those away. How many know that's good seed? Hallelujah, it's good seats. So um, just wanted to encourage you on that. We're believing God from the first part, 500 chairs. 
Right now we have 300, a little bit over 300 chairs in here right now. And uh, so we're going to believe God for the 500 chairs. There's $60 a chair. $60 a chair. Praise God. How many know it's better than a metal chair? Because when I get to preaching, those chairs don't get comfortable. So you need to have, have some, 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 I'm trying to be nice here. You got to have some cushion on your, on, yeah, on your back end. Cushion for your, whatever everybody else is saying. So you, you, you guys just, um, if you've got, let's say this, let's say you've got four or five family members in your, in your um, family, obviously. Um, go ahead and just do $60 a family member. And everybody buy a chair. And then let me encourage you on this too. Buy a chair for, maybe you believe in God for somebody to come to church. Buy a chair for them. That's a great exercise of your faith. So I encourage everybody here, we're going to raise that money. We'll get that thing taken care of. I don't know, 60 times um, 500 chairs. I don't know what all that is. but um, it's, it's, And put it, on the, um, put it on the offering envelope. Can I see that offering envelope, baby? Check this out, y'all. Down on, on the other part on your offering envelope, it says other. That would be, other would be chairs. So just put chair and put your $60, $120 or whatever the case may be for that. And it'll go directly towards the chairs that we need in our sanctuary. Amen. Then after we get the chairs, we'll work on the carpet. Amen. Because I, I'm telling you right now, we get 500 chairs in here, they'll get full. Um, I've heard this. How many remember that, the movie, um, um, Fields, of, yeah, Fields of Dreams, Dreams of Fields, where the corn stalks are at? And you remember the phrase, this is what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> if you build it, they'll come. And so I believe as you provide chairs, there'll be people that come. And it's an exercise of our faith. And so I believe that um, when we get um, those chairs in here, we're going to be growing that much more. Amen. Isn't it good to go to a church that's growing? That's, that's affecting the community and um, doing all the wonderful things that we're doing. So I want to encourage you. Uh, maybe you have the money to do that today. Just go ahead and write out a check. Get it done. Amen. Maybe you were just doing it on a, on a monthly kind of thing. That's fine, too. Um, as you know, I haven't done a whole lot of plug about the building over the two and a half years we've been here. Um, it's, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that we are building a building. So I'm not going to beg you for money. I said, I'm not going to beg you for money. I said, we're not going to beg you for money. We're believers. We're not beggars. Amen. And how many know that we believe that if you take part in our church, one of the ways that you can do that is through giving of your tithes and offerings. Amen. And specifically in these chairs. Now, if you buy a set of chairs, your name's not going to be plastered on the back of it. And we're not going to do in memory of somebody. Amen. How many know they're in heaven? They don't care what kind of chair we have here on earth. They, they, they like it in heaven. They really don't care about the chair, so we don't have to do it in memory of anybody or anything like that. Amen. <laughs> so we are like, well, auntie, you know, whatever her name is, she, she, she don't care. She's in heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I just want to encourage you along those lines on the chairs. And once we get the chairs in here, then we'll work on, on the carpet. And then we have a couple other things in the future we're going to announce after the first of the year. Because how many know the kids are taking over? I said, the kids are taking over. I mean, we had, how many babies did we have? We had 14 babies the other day, the other service. And um, just babies. Praise the Lord for babies. You know, we haven't had a marriage seminar in a while, so I think the last one we had, it took. <laughs> so, I mean, I've, I've just learned that as a pastor, you know, hold off until you get a bigger building before you have a marriage seminar. <laughs> Some of y'all get that in a little bit. Praise the Lord. So let's pray over your tithes and offerings and we'll get, we'll get going here. Father, we just thank you so much for your word today. I thank you so much for just the opportunity that we have to sow into your kingdom today. And Father, I thank you that those who are giving their tithes and offerings today, Father, that they give it with a willing heart that they're ready to receive. And Father, we thank you. It's not that you want the money, you just want us obedience. And Father, I thank you ahead of time. Now we just call the, those chairs in in Jesus' name. Every one of those 500 chairs, we decree and declare it in, in Jesus' name. Now go ministering angels, go ministering spirit, and bring them in. Bring in our harvest now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you that large amounts of money will get in here to take care of this so we don't have to hold off for anything else. Just a large amount of money will come in. We'll get these chairs in here. We'll get the carpet done. Then we can work on some greater things that you have for us in the future. We thank you, Father, like a parking lot. Glory to God. And we thank you, Father, for we give you a praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. You be blessed as you give today. 
We are excited about the softball tournament. Um, one of the things that we have learned uh, just through the ministry over the years that we've been here in Seminole, but even though we're growing, um, we don't want to be one of those, just those large churches that are not personal, that, don't, that you don't come to church, you don't feel like you're part of the family. We want to grow, but we still want to remain family. Um, you, know, uh, the, you know, Pastor John has six kids, and I remember when we were first, well, they actually came to church before us, when we, before we got here, but I remember f- first meeting him and, and seeing all six of those kids kind of stair-stepped down. And um, even though now that they're, you know, one, two, three, three of them are married, and, um, and, and their, their families are growing, and then, you know, the other ones will eventually get married and things along those lines. Some of you know, regardless of how big his family gets, they're still family. Amen. It's the same way with us as a church. Regardless of how big we get, we're still family. So little events like we do with, these, um, with uh, the softball tournament and things along those lines helps you make a, that connection to where you still feel a part of the family. Amen. And so I encourage you to take part in those. Guys, sign up. And um, if you've got game, sign up. That was my challenge to you. And those who are above 50, we're praying for you. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the Word today? Let's get into the Word of God. Turn in your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 52, verse number 1. Isaiah chapter 52. We'll look at verse number 1. Now, I know that this is, um, this is an interesting place to start, but I have something that God's really put on my heart that I want to share with you. And I, I um, actually got started with it on Wednesday night. And um, as you're turning there, um, I just want to encourage you that, that it's time for the church to wake up. In fact, look to your neighbor right now and say, neighbor, wake up. Turn around behind you, look at somebody straight in the eye and say, neighbor, wake up. Isaiah chapter 52, verse number 1 and verse number 2 says this, Awake, awake, put your strength, put on your strength, O Zion, put on your, your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For the uncircumcised and the unclean shall no longer come to you. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise, sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose yourself from the bonds of your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Now Isaiah was here. He was prophesying to basically what we would call the church in today's terms. Now, in the Old Testament, Zion represented people, the people of God. Obviously, Jerusalem was a holy city. That's where the people of God abided at and in. Now, if you were to put this in New Testament terms, we could say that Isaiah is prophesying to the church because we are the people of God, and we are in a service just like this. Uh, Even though this is a building, we are the church. So we can apply this to our lives today. I believe Isaiah was not only speaking to the people then in the Old Testament, but he was speaking to us today. Now, I like what the message version says of this scripture. It says this, wake up, wake up. Pull on your boots, O Zion. Dress up in your Sunday best, Jerusalem, holy city. Those who want no part of God have been called out. They won't be coming along. Brush off the dust off and get... And brush, excuse me, brush off the dust and get to your feet, captive Jerusalem. Throw off your chains, captive daughter of Zion. Here we find in this scripture, again, Isaiah, he was encouraging believers to wake up. It's time for us as a church to wake up. I believe the reason why our country is in the way that it is in is because the church has been asleep. And I know that we just went through the elections and things along those lines, and I'm not here to be political by any means. But I'm here to tell you, God still has his hand on this country. Regardless who's in the office, regardless of which president it is, regardless of what government's now running our country, God is still on the throne. And this government hasn't changed God. Can you say amen? Now, I know that many of us um, at times have been tempted to say something negative about our president. I want to encourage you, now's not the time to complain about the president. Now's not the time to complain about our government. Now's the time to give um, your heart, your will, your mind, your emotions, everything that you have to God and let God take care of the country. Can you say amen? 
Now, I know that a lot of us may be concerned about the different things that are taking place in these next four years. And as I was praying, the Lord really put on my heart um, to minister on some things that will help us in these next four years. He gave me specifically several things. And I want to do this for you today. We have a CD, our ushers, um, in those, in those um, containers there, ushers. There's a group of CDs. This is last Wednesday night CDs, and I want every family to get a CD. These are all free of charge. These are not going to cost you anything. This is last Wednesday's message. So if you guys would go ahead and hand those out. If you, maybe you're single, you're a family. Maybe um, you, you're married, you're a family. Maybe you're here visiting today, you're a family. I want you to receive this CD. If you're here even Wednesday nights, I want you to have this CD. Because in this CD, we talk specifically what the Word of God says about our family. Can you say amen? About our finances and about our future. It's interesting, as I've done some research about the concerns of Americans, those are the three main concerns in America today. What's going to happen to our family, what's going to happen to our finances, and what's going to happen to our future. Well, how many know God's Word has a lot to say about that? And we must stand on God's Word. That CD will help you, will encourage you uh, to get into the Word of God. I want you to know it's not my message, it's God's message. I want you to look at those scriptures, and I want you to study those scriptures out for yourself. Because these next four years, we must be founded on the Word of God. We must not waver. We must not uh, be tossed to and fro. We must not grow weary in well-doing. We as believers must stand strong on the Word of God. Can I get a better amen than that? The Word of God has been forever settled. The Word of God has remained faithful for thousands of years. Countries will come and go. Governments will start up and dissolve away. But one thing will always remain, and that is God's holy, precious Word. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time to wake up. I heard a story of Napoleon Bonaparte. He said this, he was pointing at a map of the world, and he said, there, he growled, is a sleeping giant. He said this, let him sleep. If he wakes, he will shake the world. He was actually talking about China way back in the day, and how China was a sleeping giant. And he was concerned if China was to wake up, China would shake the world. Well, I want you to know, according to many people, his interpretations, China owns America. And what Napoleon was saying way back in the day, he was saying, let China sleep because China will shake the world. But let me say something that goes even a little bit deeper than that. I believe that Satan has been saying the same thing about the church. I believe Satan's like, let the church sleep because if the church awakens... To shake the world. It's time for us to wake up. Just like Napoleon had such fear of China, I believe that Satan has much more fear of us. Because it's time for us as believers to wake up and let's shake this country. The reality of this and this message is that the church. We, as the church, we have lost somewhat of a voice in this country. There's abortions. There's no prayer in school. We've lost a voice. We've lost influence in our country. But I believe that's starting to change. The moment that the elections ended and we all received the results of who our president was, I knew in my spirit, man, something shifted. And it wasn't a bad thing. It was a good thing. Let me say that again. It was not a bad thing. It was a good thing. And I remember what some of my friends in the ministry said about some, some um, qualified ministers who have been in ministry for a very long time said that they already knew that Obama was going to win the election. They already knew because the church was still asleep. And that this had to take place for the church to wake up. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, wake up. I came across a video um, as I was studying for this message. And this, this video, we're going to watch this video here in here just a second. This video is basically somebody interviewing other people, I believe it's in New York, about what Christians are actually known for. So let's dim these lights and let's, let's watch this video here. It's very interesting.
Maybe. It seems to me this division, this separateness, isn't getting any of us anywhere. So I set out across the nation divided to stimulate a conversation with anybody willing to have one. From Southern Baptists to occasional Catholics, to concerned atheists and apathetic Protestants. Everybody believes something. Everybody's got a dog in this fight. But what impression does America have of Christians? What are they known for? So to be holy, I guess. Forgiveness. Going to church. Fanaticism. Killing off of non-Christians. Well, Christians are known for the Crusades. <laughs> Historically warfare, but <clears throat> we're trying to forget about that. Mmm, trying to get other people to be Christian would be one answer I'm thinking of. Being good people. Love thy neighbor type things. Mm. Compassion. Theatrics. Loving Jesus. Probably Jesus Christ. Being really snobby. Yeah, a lot of hypocrites. Being a hypocrite. Oh. <laughs> trying to live the right life, trying to do the right thing. Well, gosh, I'd hope love, that's what we're supposed to be known for, is love because we're followers of Christ, and Christ was love, perfect love. Politics, I would say, especially in this country, politics. As you can tell, there is a misunderstanding about Christians in America today. Where our country was founded on, in God we trust, and yet today, people don't even know what Christianity is, to a certain extent. Our country needs us to awaken. You're thinking, okay, what can we do in Seminole? We can do a whole lot. See, our voice is our connection to the spirit realm. And when we lost our voice, we lost our connection to this country in the spirit realm. Because when our country was founded on in God we trust, we allowed the spirit of God to have rule and reign in our country. But whenever we lost our voice in that realm, we lost a lot of our authority in this country. It's time for us to gain it back. It's time to take back what the devil has stolen from us. I believe that us here in Seminole, even though we're reaching other communities and we'll reach many, many more and we're reaching other countries, we're doing our part. But praise God, that one part is going to make a difference. Because I believe there is a sound in the spirit realm. A sound that's coming forth in this country. And it's being uh, arisen into God's ears. And he's, he's hearing the cries of the people. That it's time to return back to what we originally were founded on. Now this message today, I believe I've, 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 I've found some keys for our, specifically our church. And I believe for the body of Christ it's going to help us get back to where we were at. How many would like to learn some of that today? I, I, I don't want to walk through the streets and people not know who Jesus is. It grieves my heart. I love my country too much to allow it to go away like that video has shown us. It's time for us to step it up. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, wake up. Find somebody around and say, wake up. I came across um, Brother Hagen's book called The Praise Cure. And um, I know many of you are familiar with Brother Hagen. Um, this is what he, he said in his book called The Praise Cure. And it's interesting. It goes in context with this message. And he says this about Healing from Heaven, the book by Dr. Lillian B. Yeomans. He says this. He says, in this book, tells a story about a woman who went to China as a missionary many years ago when China was open to receive the gospel. This missionary contracted smallpox. In those days, there was no cure, and it, it didn't exist for that disease. So doctors could do little for her. If a person contracted smallpox back then, there was no hope for that person just for them to die. It was a deadly disease. This missionary was quarantined in her room, and ugly smallpox small small marks sorry, covered her body from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. There she was, stricken with a deadly disease with little medical assurance and, and, and destituted. And in a faraway country, vir virtually given up to die. 
She didn't know what to do since there was no cure, so she began to fervently ask the Lord. The Lord always rewards the diligent seeker, and he always answers sincere, faith-filled prayer. So he spoke to her and told her to praise him for his faithfulness to keep his own word. Then he showed her a vision of two baskets. One basket contained the test and trial, the smallpox. That basket was full. The other basket contained her praise, and that basket was only half full. The Lord told her the praise basket needed to be filled with praises so it would outweigh the basket of the test and trial. And when the praise basket was full, her healing would be manifested. As the missionary laid quarantined in her room, she began to fervently praise and worship the Lord day and night. Everyone feared for her life and thought the loud praises coming from her room was little more than an act of a delirious woman. But in spite of all opposition, she continued to praise God. She sang praises to God from her heart. She did nothing but praise the Lord. She praised Him for His greatness. She praised Him for all He had ever done for her. She praised Him for His faithfulness to His Word. She praised Him for her healing. She praised God and praised God and praised God. What was the result of such a sincere and devoted time of praise to God? Finally, after several days of heartfelt praise, the Lord showed her that the basket of praise was full. She walked out of the quarantine room completely healed. Her skin was as smooth and clear as a child's. No smallpox marks were to be found anywhere on her body. There's something that's taken place in our country. I believe that the church has lost her voice in praise. We know how to pray. We've prayed for the elections. And I've even heard Christians say this, why, why do we even need to pray for our country? It doesn't matter because the vote always is swayed against what we pray for. Why do we even need to pray? Well, it's interesting here in this situation as the Lord led me to this, this, this story of this missionary, I saw the same kind of thing in my spirit. I saw in this basket our country and the tests and trials that our country was in and how it was way um, out of balance. And the Lord began to tell me almost like the missionary, whenever the church can fill the basket full of praise, then we'll see, we'll see our country changed. Notice something about this missionary. She fervently sought God on this, and God rewarded it. But God basically said, all right, you've, you've done enough seeking, now start praising Hear me. We've done enough seeking in America. Hear me. We've done enough seeking in America. It's time to start praising. I said it's time to start praising. It's time to start praising. It's so easy for us as Christians to complain about our government. That is the opposite of praising. That's exactly what the enemy wants us to do, is to complain. Because if the enemy can get our voices off of praising, he's got us, and he has our country. This missionary, she got a hold of something. She, she, she came to a point, she, say, she sought God. But God said, all right, it's time to start praising. We need to learn how to praise God. Praising God is more than clapping to a beat. Praising God is more than lifting up our hands and lifting up a shout of praise. Praise God is much more than that. And for the next several weeks, we're going to look at true scriptural praise and live in a lifestyle of praise because I believe praise is what's going to change this country around. Do you realize that people that worship and praise um, idols and, and false religions and their gods that are dead, it, it comes to not, it, it does not affect anything. It's a waste of time for them. We're the only religion, because our God is alive, that when we pray and praise, something happens. We're the only religion, because we're the only ones that serve the true and living God. So when we sing, when we praise, when we lift up our voices to God, something is happening. Let me give you an example of this in Acts chapter 16. Turn over there to Acts chapter 16. Are you with me today? This is so important. Acts chapter 16, 
Verse, Acts chapter 16, look at verse number 25. This is very familiar. We've looked at this scripture several times. I've preached on this several, several times over all the years. And I, I saw something as I was praying. And the Lord began to show me some things about the church. In Acts chapter 16, verse 25, the Bible says this. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's chains were loosed. Notice this, and the keeper, I want you to highlight or underline that, and the keeper of the prison, because we're going to come back and look at this, awakened from sleep. Let me read that again. And the keeper of the prison awakened from sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, supposing that the prisoners had fled, drew his sword, and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice, saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, and you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all who were in his house. Now notice this situation here. We find that Paul and Silas, they were persecuted because they were preaching the name of Jesus. They were thrown in jail. I mean, no, that's a pretty dark hour. But that was very surface. We all know this. You've heard me minister on this. You've probably heard a lot of other ministers minister on this. At midnight, we should be praying and praising, and God will deliver us. Absolutely, but there's something deeper that we must go into to today. I want you to look at the very fact about this keeper of the prison in verse number 27. This really jumped out at me as I was praying. This keeper of the prison is a type of the church today. And I'm going to explain this. This keeper of the prison is the church today. Now, if you look at the responsibilities of this keeper, this prison keeper, he was in charge of keeping Paul and Silas securely. In fact, you can look at verse number 23 of that same chapter. And when, he had laid many, and when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into the prison, commanding the jailer, notice this, to keep them securely. This jailer had a responsibility to keep Paul and Silas then he goes on, verse 24, Having received such a charge, he put them in the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Now, I believe that Paul and Silas was symbolized in the Word of God. And what I mean by that is, if you notice something about Paul and Silas, they applied the Word of God in a dark situation. Instead of griping and complaining about the fact that they were in the inner jail and the darkest parts of the jail with the craziest of the crazy people there, they prayed and they praised God. They applied the word. I mean, no, God's just looking for some people to apply the word. But notice something here. As they were praying and as they were praising, the prisoners were not asleep. The jailer was. Now, the prisoners, I, I believe, represent the world, the heathen, the people that, that are out in the world right now. How many know that, that people know when you're living for Christ, they know you're a Christian? They, they might not go to church. They might not, you know, anything about Jesus. But if you stay around them long enough and you're living righteously, something's going to get on them, and that is Jesus. Because they're listening to us. So we know that Paul and Silas, they were lifting up their voices to God. They were praising, they were praying, and the prisoners heard them. Guess who didn't hear that? The keeper of the prison. Why? Because he was awakened when there was a shaking. There was awakening when there was a shaking. I believe God's shaking the church to awake. But he's just waiting for somebody to apply the Word of God. Because before it shook, Paul and Silas had to apply the Word. Now let me read you some scriptures today. God gave the Word of God, the Bible, the foundation of our belief system to us, the church. We know in John chapter 1, verse 14. You don't have to turn there. You can just look there with me. John chapter 1. Or just listen, listen to this. John chapter 1, verse 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, 
And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Well, we know that the Word became flesh, and we know that's Jesus. Then in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 and 23, we find the Bible says this, And he put all things under his feet. God put all things under Jesus' feet and gave Jesus him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Jesus is the word, became flesh, and dwelt among us when he was crucified and arose again on the third day. All authority and power was given to him, and then that authority and power was given to the church. The word was given to the church. Hear me, hear me, hear me. The word was given to the church. There are so many Christians waiting for God to do something in our country, and God's like, no, I've already given you the word. I've already given you the word. Oh, God, move in our country. If we repent and turn from our wicked ways, and he'll heal our land. Yes, I agree with that 100%, but there's more than just repenting all the time. we got to step out of repenting and step into praising. How many times has our country repented and we're back where we're at? You step out of repentance by praising. And when a church, the body of Christ in America, can just stop repenting, and start praising, he inhabits the praises of his people. God will inhabit our country like never before. Oh, is this getting to anybody today? This is so huge on the inside of me. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 says this. Jesus said, And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against her. I want to declare to you today that when we apply the word, hell cannot stop us. There's not a demon on this planet that can stop us when we apply the word. Regardless of the change, regardless of the government, regardless of the financial situation, that cannot stop us when we're founded on the word. Mm -mm -mm. Now, the church, we have we failed at times, just like the prisoner guard here, he fell asleep on the job. The church has fallen asleep. I said we've fallen asleep, but that's changing. Because I don't know about you, but if you're if any kind of, uh, which I know you do, if you're in tune with what the Spirit of God is doing in the season that you're in, you can hear the same shaking that I'm hearing. You, hear, you still hear the roar in the spirit realm of a shaking that's going on because we are choosing to apply the Word of God to our lives. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, wake up. The church will awaken when the Word of God is put into action. Do you realize that the church was created to praise God? Turn to 1 Peter. Are you with me today? You still with me? Turn to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, look at verse number 9. This is good stuff, man. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you... Let me say this, that you, that you, that we as a church, that we as a church, what should we be doing? Proclaiming the praises of him. Now let me say this, and I know this might ruffle some feathers here, but I love doing that anyways. It doesn't say his own special people that you may pray to him. Now, we believe in prayer, don't get me wrong, but anything can be out of balance. Oh, come on, help me in this place. I believe in prayer. We pray, uh, our, one of our foundation pillars in our church is prayer. But if you don't have prayer and praise together, it's out of balance. 
I was raised in a church that prayed, and we prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. But whenever I got a hold of the fact that prayer and praise together is what gets things going, changed my life, changed my walk with God. Every time a prayer should start and end with praise. Every time a prayer, man almighty, we are, we are definitely going to stay on, prayer, on, on praise for a while. Y'all looking at me like a cow to new gate. It's one thing to pray for your food. It's another thing to give God praise for your food. It's one thing to pray for your family. It's another thing to give God praise for your family. It's one thing to pray for your finances. It's a whole other thing to give God praise for your finances. Are you catching where I'm going here today? We as a church, we should continue to pray, but let's not get unbalanced and forget praising. Mm, 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 mm. Let me read this to you again. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Our call, our assignment as a church is to proclaim the praises to proclaim the praises. How I many you know God brought the church out of darkness? Glory to God. Glory to God. When you hear something you don't like on the news about our government, lift up your hand and say, God, I thank you ahead of time. I thank you that you're moving in our country right now. I thank you that the Spirit of God, you're, you're being unleashed in this country right now. And I thank you for our president. I lift up, I thank you that you the Spirit of wisdom and revelation come on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That he starts worshiping the true and living God. Do you, you see what I'm saying? You say, oh, you get all that Obama stuff. I get Obama. You're no better than the world when you do that. Well, you're no better than the world when you do that. What separates us from the world? Praising. What separates us from the world? Not complaining, but praising. What separates you from all the other people that are gripping and complaining about our government? Praising. Oh. The world is listening to us. And I believe we're going to apply the word. Now notice something. I want you to go back to Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. There was something about, else about the jailer, this keeper of the prison, that we must understand because he represents us as a church. First of all, we know that the keeper, he was to secure Paul and Silas. Now, we, we've established the fact that they were um, symbolized in applying the Word of God. We can say they were basically a symbol of the Word of God in action. The keeper was to secure that. So the church should secure, hear me, hear me, we should secure the very fact that we're going to apply the Word and guard that. We should guard the application of God's Word. Not the application of what the world says. Not applying what everybody else is doing. We're applying what the Word of God says. And we're securing that. But not only that, but how did this keeper of the prison, how did he secure this? He had some keys. I said he has some keys. Again, Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. We find this, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. How many know that our country is here on earth? We are responsible for our country. God has given us the keys to secure our country's future. Hear me, hear me, hear me. You and I, I knew we had the keys to secure the nature and direction and future of our country. Do you, you, are you hearing me? Thank God we should pray. Thank God we should do these things. But it's not, oh, God, move in our country. No. Hear me. God wants to. He loves our country. He, he, it's not like, well, if you pray that long enough, maybe I'll, I'll feel like I need to move there. You know, maybe I need to put my presence there a little bit more. You guys, you know, beg a little bit more. 
No, he wants to. He wants to invade this country like never before. But he's waiting on us, the church, to do something. And what is that? Giving him praise. Giving him praise. When you walk in the streets of Seminole, Denver City, Seagraves, La Mesa, and all that, when you walk through the streets, instead of having a frown, put a smile on. And know that you're saved, delivered, and set free. When you're around your coworkers that are griping and complaining, get your praise on. Whenever you get a phone call from your spouse and they're having a bad day and you want to give them a piece of your mind too, give God some praise. When your kids come home and they're tired and cranky and all upset, give God some praise. Hallelujah. When you watch the news, just sit there and give God praise. Sure, there's going to be some times that you're going to hear things that's going to upset you, but don't let that stir you to the negative. Let it stir you to the positive and give God some praise during that time. Oh, is this helping anybody today? Now notice something here. We are not only called and charged to secure the application of God's Word in America, but we've been given the keys. Now you know that we preach this message a lot here, so I'm not going to go into depth, but we know that when you have somebody's keys, you have authority, whatever that locks and unlocks. If I was to get somebody's keys here, I now own your car, because I have your keys. That car is now mine because I have your keys. It's the same way. Whenever Jesus said, I've got the keys, and whenever he gave it to the church, we now have authority in America. Because notice what he says is, and I will give you the keys of, of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth, our country's on earth, will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth, our country's in this earth will be loosed in heaven. Oh, man, somebody needs to just thank God right now. <laughs> our country's not going under. I said our country's not going under. Oh, we are not going under. These next four years, the church is going to rise like never before because there is going to be a sound in this country, a heavenly sound that's going to shake hell and it's going to cause heaven to open up and pour out a spirit like it's never been seen in America before. I believe that when the church lifts up their voices in praise, a sound's going out in this country like radar waves and it's attacking the enemy. Our praise will influence the decisions in our government. Like radar waves, it's like sound waves going right into the government. When we lift up our praise, there might be a government official that's about to say something about a law or do something, and that radio wave just hits them and says, no, I don't think I want to do that now. I don't know why. I just don't think I need to do that. We do. Our praise. Writing that, that senator or that, that whoever it is, a, a, a nasty letter is not going to change his mind. I'm a Christian. I'm going, to, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. He, you know what he does? But there's something more powerful than that. Your voice giving God praise. Our voice giving God praise will change this country. Turn to Revelation chapter 1 and I'll, I'll close. I'll do my best to. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. Oh, glory to God. We're going to be known as a church of not only prayer, but praise. Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, Jesus said this, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Now, notice this last thing he said. And I have the keys of Hades and death. We have the keys because we found that the keys represents power, and that power has been given to the church. We have the authority to change our country. I said we have the authority to change our country. And it's more, let me, let me say this, it's more than voting. We have to do something spiritual in our country. And this is the reason why our country was founded on in God we trust. That's our foundation. If you're going to change a building, you've got to change the foundation. Amen. Now I want to close with a prophecy that was given in 1985 by Pastor David Wilkinson. He actually was ministering a message and he slipped over into prophecy. He said this on June 5th, 1985. In his message he said, A spirit of slumber 
God is saying, don't give up on my church. There is a great shaking coming, a great breathing of God's holy breath. New life is coming. An army of resurrected saints, once dead, are now being raised to power. It's a judgment day and destruction of this nation. The wicked and the violent will be cast down, but it is also a day of resurrection. It is a day of revival, a time of Holy Ghost activity. An exceeding great army is, is, is going to come, walking out of their graves. Spiritual Lazarus, ripping off grave clothes and breathing new life, will walk out of the valley of dry bones and join the ranks of the overcomers. Many who have been in that deep sleep, bound by the grave clothes of a spirit of slumber, will be breathed upon by the Holy Ghost and will spring to life. Are you dead? Dry? Get ready to be shaken. Get ready to be remade, worked over. Get ready to be visited by the breath of Almighty God. You have an appointment. You are chosen to live, to get out of your grave. God will say to you, live, and you will rise up and live. That is, you will live if you respond to the mighty breathing of the Spirit upon you. Saints of God, O oh, holy remnant, rejoice. Let me read that again. Saints of God, O oh, holy remnant, rejoice. The wind of God is blowing. The breath of Almighty God will rattle the gates of hell and send every demon into shock as the spiritual graves open and as those who have been very dry for so long come out of their bondage and become alive to holiness and worship in spirit and in truth. As certain as Satan could not keep Christ in the grave, he can neither hinder nor stop this great awakening from the dead in God's house. That was in 1985. 1985, I believe, is coming to pass today. It starts today. It starts in my life. It starts in your life. We will not allow the spirit of slumber to keep us from doing what God's called us to do. Today is our day. Do you real? oh, glory to God, thank you, Father. Do you realize that God created you for such a time as this? Do you realize he has a purpose for your life? You weren't just here because your parents did and here you are. No, God knew you were going to be here in these last days. Not just to work a, a full-time job, get your, your pension and retire and go on the beach and just live it up. God has something bigger planned for you. Why? Because it's time for the church to arise. He puts you in this time, in this place. Not to fill a chair in a church. Not to fill a pew in a church. You are not pew potatoes. You're not just members in a church. You're ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Arise, church. Awaken, church. You're not here by accident. You're not here. God just didn't poof, well, let's just see how he does. No, he puts something in each inside of, of each and every one of us to do great things for him in these last days. Oh, with your heads bowed and eyes closed, glory to God. Hallelujah. Man, I, I sense a, there's, there's, a, there's a roaring going inside of my spirit, man, right now. There are some here today, with everybody says bowed and eyes closed, there are some here today, you are a spiritual Lazarus. You have, you have not done your part spiritually, whether it be in the church, whether it be at your house, whether it be you, you've just fallen away from God. And I know you've been in church all of your life. I know you've been in church for, for however long, and you've heard altar calls. Well, this one's different. This one's different. Just as Jesus stood outside the tomb, and he said, Lazarus, come forth. As a pastor of the, of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I'm speaking to the spirit man. And I'm, and I'm speaking forth. I'm commanding you to rise and come forth. Quit. Stay. Stay out of the grave. Come out of the grave. Take off those grave clothes. Come back to Christ today. Quit playing games with your Christianity. Stop playing. Start living. Now's not the time to stay in the grave. Now's not the time to party with your friends and act another way at church. Now's not the time. Our country is, is, is falling away. And our country needs you. God needs you. 
He needs us as a church to rise up. Come forth. Come out. Rip off those grave clothes. And live sold out for Christ like you've never done before. Who cares what happened in the past? Who cares? It's done. You can't change it. So you were hurt by the church. So you were hurt by this person. Forgive them. Go on. Don't live underneath that, that condemnation anymore. Rip off that, that grave clothes and come forth. Oh, there's a big call on this church. There's a big call on your life. Come forth. Come out. In Jesus' name. If that's you, and you're like, man, that's, that's burning in my... I want you to, right now, I want you to stand where you're at. You say, man, I've got to come out of this grave. I'm tired of it. Thank you. Is there anybody that's just standing right where you're at? You say, man, I'm coming out of this grave. I'm coming out. I'm not going to be a spiritual Lazarus sitting in the grave. Is there anybody else? Stand to your feet right now. With everybody's head bowed and eyes closed. Wherever you're at, just stand up. Thank you. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, ma'am. Hallelujah. You mean business. Thank you, sir. Glory to God. Is there anybody else? You are that spiritual Lazarus. It's time for you to come out. Time to rip off. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Hallelujah. Anybody else say, I was that spiritual Lazarus, but I'm coming out of the grave. I hear the voice of the Spirit speaking to me. Come out. Come out. Come out. There will, oh, come out. Please, please hear me. Everybody says bowed and eyes closed. Please hear me. Don't leave this service without taking that, taking that step out of the grave. Don't leave this service. And I'm, 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 I know, I know, please don't leave that service. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Is there anybody else you say, I'm just going to be completely honest. I'm just coming out. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for moving across this place, affecting the change in people's hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. With everybody's eyes closed and heads bowed, I want to pray for those. And I just want you, those who are standing, just stay there. Just don't move. Just stay right there. I don't want any life group leaders going there. Or it's just, just it's them and God right now. Let me pray for you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just lift up those who are standing today. Lord, they've known your voice. They've known right from wrong. But they want to come out of the grave today. And Father, I know without a shadow of a doubt that you're here in our midst and that you're going to resurrect those. You're going to have those that, that have been in the grave too long to come out. And you're, going to, and you're going to begin to minister to their hearts right now by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I ask that you invade their thoughts, invade their hearts, invade their soul, man, right now. Invade their spirit to where you completely alter their lives today, right now. Just like you altered Lazarus in the grave. His body was decaying, but the life of God came in, and he walked out of that grave. I speak into the very spirit, men, of, of these that are standing. Come alive. Come alive, come forth, and be changed. I want everybody to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I need you. I've fallen. I've failed. I've sinned. I've lived my own way. I don't want to be a Lazarus anymore. I hear your voice. Your voice is calling me out of the grave. I'm going to heed that voice. I'm not going to be a spiritual Lazarus anymore. I'm coming to your voice. Please forgive me. I confess my sin to you. I need you. I can't live this life without you. I have to have all of you. I forget the past. I lay it aside. And I run to you. I embrace you as my Father. Thank you for taking away my past. I declare to you, most heavenly high Father, I will serve you all the days of my life. I will represent you well. I 
love you so very much. In Jesus' name. Everybody stand to your feet today with your head still bowed and eyes closed. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for moving. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for moving in this place. Yes, I thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Grab somebody by the hands. Father, we pray for the person on our right and on the left right now. Father, we, we, we come together as a church, as your church. Our desire for our country is to awaken to your, to your move, to get back to the foundations. Father, even though there may be just 200, 300 people here today, I know that this is a cry of the heart of many Americans, and we stand with them in the spirit realm, not asking you to move, because we know that you want to move, but just declaring, like the Word of God says, that we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, that we're called to give praises to you. As a church, we choose not to complain and gripe about what's going on in our country, but we choose to praise you. And as our voices are lifted in the most holy sanctuary, our praise will be a sweet aroma unto your lips and to your, to your nostril and to, to your nose, and you'll be able to, to sense that your people are serious about applying the Word of God. Oh, thank you, Father, for changing our country. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All across this place, just lift up your hands. Let's just thank you for changing our country. Father, we're not asking you to change this country. We know, we know that you want to. But now we're going to thank you for changing this country. We're going to fill the basket full of praise right now. We praise you for our country. We thank you for our country. Oh, we praise you, Father. This country will not go under on our watch. This country will stand strong in the last days. And we praise you, Father. We thank you for freedom in this country. We thank you for all the, all the, the, the ones that have died for our freedom. And we thank you, Lord, that we have a country that we can, we can do what we're doing here today. And we're so blessed in America. We thank you for America. We thank you for our president. We thank you for our government. We thank you and we praise you, Father, that you're moving in this country. You're moving in this, in this time, in this hour. You're moving in our president. You're moving in the White House. You're moving in the Senate. We thank you, Father, that you're moving in, the, in, in all the places of the government. You're moving even in the cities and the city. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for an awakening in our country. Hey, thank you, Lord, for an awakening in our country. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We lift up our voices. We lift up our voices and praise, and we thank you for our country. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. We bless you and honor you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Look at your neighbor one last time. Say, neighbor, wake up. Come on, find somebody else around you. Say, neighbor, wake up. Well, hallelujah. Well, tonight we have our community service. It starts at 6 o'clock. So I encourage you guys to come out. There'll be a lot of people here. So if, if you see a visitor in our church, it's perfectly fine to give up your chair. Let them have that chair. They're not aliens from another planet. And um, we, we do need an usher team, so if you want to help usher tonight, see Miss Daphne. And uh, we sure you wear your Family Harvesters black shirt tonight. And, um, that, and if you want to come out early, we're going to be moving some chairs from Legacy over here because we need all the chairs over there, and they need to be cleaned a little bit. We've got a little snack bar thing going over there. So if you want to come out, we, the praise team is going to be out here at 5 o'clock warming up. So if you want to come out around 4.30 or so and help move chairs over here, Pastor John will be out here around that time, and um, he'll kind of get you guys organized on that. Amen. Thank you guys for being here today. Why don't you hug somebody in the neck and tell them God is in the house. 
So God's in the house, and you're dismissed. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.